welcome to the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. Hello. You might be thinking, didn't he already review this? Yeah, and the sequels too. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Sort of an endurance trial. I'm going to watch all three back to back. A human centipede, centipede. You see, one movie is tough. Three in a row, that's messed up. I went in expecting a monster movie, and what we got literally sucked ass. Ha. Huh. In the meantime, here's my review for the OG, The Human Centipede, first sequence. And I'll see you on the other side. Warning. This movie is gross. The subject matter is disgusting. The images and concepts are graphic. You may not want to eat anything for a while. And please remember, this is only a movie. And do not try any of this at home. You weirdo. Body horror is nothing new. It's a subgenre that usually involves graphic depictions of human body transformation, but more likely destruction. Movies like The Fly, Alien, Videodrome may seem tame by comparison to today's entries, like Saw, and Saw 2, and Saw 3, and Saw 4, and, and so on. Oh god, this movie. I saw it when it first came out because the premise sounded so weird, so fascinating, so crazy. Look at this poster. That looks horrifying. I should have known. This is what I looked like right after I saw it. I skipped the sequels. I even tried not to think about this one anymore. But it's always there, in the back of my mind. And it seemed to have stamped itself a place in pop culture. I couldn't get away. I was expecting a typical old school monster movie like The Fly. Or maybe some Kafka-esque nightmare. Or even something a bit more mainstream. I was wrong. I hope you're not eating. This is the Human Centipede, first sequence. Welcome to Germany, where creepy men sit in their cars and... Oh, thank God, he's only looking at pictures of... dogs? A slight bit of foreshadowing that just leaves me to wonder how will Ubu sit? Fuck now! This better involves surgically connected dogs. And does a trucker shit in the woods? Maybe. We'll never know because he doesn't let him finish. Be very quiet. I'm hunting twakas. Ha 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 Dick move, man. Two American tourists, Lindsay, played by Ashley C. Williams, and Jenny, played by Ashlyn Yenny, are trying to get to a nightclub, but get lost and then they suffer car trouble. It's okay. It's a rental. They're lost, their car broken down, and no cell service. And the auto club is a little iffy. Like a good neighbor, rim job is there. Because tourists and movies are so sensible, they walk through the woods. Just keep an eye out for Jason, the Blair Witch, and that tree from the Evil Dead. We came from over here, I swear. How but do you know that? All the trees look the same. And they find help. Ah, shit. This guy again. Meet Dr. Joseph Heiter, played by Dieter Laser. That was a really hard line to get right. This man is a walking red flag. Something to drink? Uh, uh, water's fine. Yeah, just water. Two roofie coladas coming up. Here, drink this and don't complain. German water is naturally bitter. I don't like human beings. Did I mention he's a doctor? <laughs> hey now, roofies are expensive! I mean, my grandmother's rug. I guess we'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. Lindsay drank all her water, so she's down. What's the wrong rape drive. What? What? Oh my god. He's so upfront about it. That leaves Jenny. Ah, shit. My rug is ruined. They wake up captive with the trucker, who he kills right away because he's not a match for the two girls. Or his insurance ran out. But not to worry, he's soon replaced by Katsuro, played by Akihiro Kitamura. We finally get an explanation. Long story short, he was a surgeon specializing in separating Siamese twins. It's nice to see villains explain their evil plans so clearly. Visual aids really do help. Next time I would suggest PowerPoint. 
Now he wants to attach people and make an all new being. I'm not sure it works like that, but I have to admire his attention to detail. You never go ass to mouth! Right now he's just describing what he's planning. Using really crude drawings, it's almost childish. Not a single incision has been made yet. And he's so matter of fact and their reactions of pure horror makes this a really disturbing scene. And it just seems to keep going. You know, whoever's in the back gets the short end of the stick. The ones in back have to eat the front ones shit. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna share something with you. Whenever I get really grossed out by this kind of stuff, like operations, appendixes, and stuff like that, I seem to lose strength in my hands. I can't make a fist as firmly as I usually can, and it's, it's been like this ever since I was little. I googled it, and apparently it happens to other people, and it's kind of like a lighter version of fainting. So instead of fainting, I lose strength in my hands. I hope this brings us closer. Of course, the buildup is excruciating. Lindsay tries to escape, but she really doesn't get very far. Ugh, I would love an indoor pool. That's not a joke, I just always wanted one. I bet it's heated. Oddly, the lights go out and the doctor runs off to deal with it, presumably to make an over-the-phone payment to the power company. I hope they take the PayPal. Really, that was kind of an odd interruption. Lindsay is so close to escaping, but goes back for her BFF, who's still unconscious. You're gonna regret this? She really does make a heroic effort, I have to say, but she still can't outrun a dart gun. Well, time for the operation. I really hope it's not too graphic. It's graphic. When you think about it, this is going to be a lot of work for one surgeon. He seems satisfied, but exhausted. But that, it's that good kind of exhausted. I mean, that was a lot of work. It's Miller time. I have to ask, how does he move them around? He's like Sid from Toy Story. Except with, you know, people. I did it! Drum roll, please. Haha! <laughs> they made fun of me at school, but who's the bot munch now? This is so going on Instagram. How to care for your human centipede. Be sure to crate at night. Your human centipede might complain at first, but your furniture will thank you. Teach your centipede tricks. Be careful, they bite. Discipline is important. Be sure to feed your human centipede regularly. Don't worry about the rest. Nature will take care of them. Eventually. Peter. We knew this was coming. Peter. We knew this was coming. It was in his frickin' diagrams. Yes, this is happening. If you want to turn away, I'll understand. Just turn the sound down. Leave the video running. I need the views. <laughs> How do you come back from that? Ugh, sorry about that. Fuck you. And the doc has the nerve to complain that their sobbing is keeping him awake? Maybe you just need to tire them out during the day. And be sure to give your human centipede regular checkups. Constipated. Oh, thank God! The doc notices Jenny's getting sick. Oh, I did not need to see that. In case I censored it, it was pus. A lot of it. What you doing, son? Well, the cops show up, but I don't think they're gonna be much help. Looks like he's got two replacements now. This must be the most soundproof building in the world. Wait here while I drug you. What? Nothing. Nothing suspicious here. Just drink this. I'd say he was losing it, but that ship sailed a long time ago. He really wants to add those cops. But before he can do anything else, they leave. And the human centipede is gone. Quick, check under the giant floor mat in the kitchen! How the hell are they gonna do that? He's gotta admire their progress. My god, this man is weird. Show him what a human centipede can do when backed into a corner. Or just give a passionate speech. He believes this is his punishment. The type of hell his past actions brought upon himself. So he just takes the easy way out. How else is he gonna f- No, 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 we're not going there. We're not gonna do that. I'm so sorry. Well, the cops came back. Looks like the game is over. Sorry to disturb you. 
please go back to your, uh, smoke bomb. Off camera, the doctor takes out one of the cops. But our hero arrives in time to save the- oh. Okay, that's better. I just hope they called for backup. Meanwhile, at the centipede, Jenny isn't looking so hot. She dies, leaving Lindsay all alone. Really? We're gonna end like this? No sirens in the distance? No- this is how it ends? Ah, <sighs> yes so. And that was the human centipede. So, who's hungry? You always hear about the tourist in a foreign country who knocks on the wrong door and terrible things happen. Who would have seen this coming? It's like something your crazy grandmother would scare you with. You better be quiet or I'll sew your mouth to someone's butt. Our main victims start off as normal people, usually slain one by one in another horror movie. But rather than dying, they're kept alive and tortured continuously. The nightmare begins at the presentation, and once the centipede happens, it never really ends. They're reduced to barely human. Once the procedure is over, all their communication is through agonizing screaming and sobbing. Katsuro only speaks Japanese, and he's not understood by anyone else in the movie. This lack of communication also reinforces how the doctor sees this as a pet. Your dog barks, but you don't understand him. But that doesn't stop you from talking to him and giving him commands. Right, buddy? The doctor is clearly insane. But he's a villain for villainy's sake. He wants to reverse his life's work. But why? We know almost nothing about him. The cops are useless, as usual in these movies. But I think this guy could have saved the day if the girls only gave in to his charms. Is this a scary movie? The idea that someone would kidnap you and mutilate you is pretty terrifying. But this movie isn't scary in the traditional horror sense. The chills come from the gore, from the idea. It makes you queasy, and they don't shy away from the imagery. If a horror movie doesn't outright scare the audience, it should try to make the audience feel uneasy, in which it does. I can't look away from this movie, and I often regret it. Don't look for character development. This is torture porn, pure and simple. But it doesn't claim to be anything else, so mission accomplished. It takes a bit to get to the actual centipeding, but the buildup is agonizing. Once you know what's coming, you're squirming in your seat until the reveal. But by then, it loses some of that tension, but it's replaced with revulsion. The human centipede is 1B. It's gross, it's dreary, and nightmarishly outlandish. It spawned two sequels, second sequence and final sequence. So somebody's going to ask me to review the other ones, I know it. But tell you what. If this review breaks 2,000 views, I'll do one of the sequels. Still with us? Great. You're a rock star. And my opinion holds. Here's some trivia. The feed her scene was done in a single take because they're professionals, damn it. Okay, if you're not depressed from the ending of the last one, the next one is going to make you want to put a phaser in your mouth. And the sequel almost seemed to be done on a dare, a response to the first, and it had the interesting choice of being released in black and white. I know there's a color version out there, but I'm not going to see it. I did this one back when my uh, view counts were typically like five, six hundred views tops. I did the Human Centipede. I'm not going to do the sequel, but in case people really want it, I, I set an impossibly high goal of 2,000 views. And it hit that in like a week. All right, I guess I'm locked into it now. So, okay, let's do this. The Human Centipede 2. Full sequence. This movie, man. Thank God it's in black and white.
When I did The Human Centipede, I was facing a demon. That movie messed me up. It was shocking, it was brutal, it was extremely juvenile. I thought reviewing it, forcing myself to sit through it a few more times, would purge the demon. I also made an offhand remark, 2,000 views and I'd do the sequel. 6,000 views later, and <laughs> here we are. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. The demon is back, and this time he brought friends. 100% medically inaccurate, The Human Centipede 2. First, the sequel does something I really hate. It turns the previous movie into a movie in this universe. So in a way, it's not a sequel. Maybe I could call it a reboot or an anthology? Our main character is Martin, an asthmatic and mentally challenged security guard, played by Lawrence R. Harvey. He's an odd little guy who loves the first movie, which technically becomes the only movie since the sequel doesn't exist in this universe. What if this sequel exists in this universe too? So at some point he would be watching himself like in Spaceballs. Is any of this making sense? Martin works at a parking garage in the UK, and taste in movies aside, you can already tell there's something off about him. He really loves The Human Centipede. He seems to watch it over and over. But to him, it's not just fine cinema. It's research. He wants to build one of his very own. And it's not unlike me watching Adam Savage build his own Han Solo blaster than me wanting to build one of my own. But like director Tom Six, he wants to do it bigger than the last one. Instead of three people, Martin plans 12. Working in a car park gives Martin a seemingly endless source of victims, which he starts gathering right away. Fuck her real good. So go home and fuck mum now, you demented dog. Oh! oh boy. This kind of work is going to need a large workspace. So he scores a killer deal on a large warehouse. Killer, get it? Because he kills the landlord. Oh god, this movie. He also lives with his mother, played by Vivian Bridson. I didn't expect Martin to be an avid scrapbooker. Can't you just picture him in line at Michael's? And here's where we get a little bit of backstory on this guy. His mother blames Martin for his father being sent to prison for physically and sexually abusing him as a child. Martin's psychiatrist, played by Bill Hutchins, is also pretty awful. But at least his little centipede understands him. I named him Leggy. He gathers more participants. The movie already starts with them having one dude in a surprisingly roomy and soundproof van. The victims are mostly people who just happen to come to this parking garage, which must not be very busy for nobody to hear the screaming or see blood all over the place. Not to mention, no one finds the screaming toddler locked in a car after Martin takes his parents. He also has this horrible neighbor who plays music too loud and gets violent if anyone complains. Anymore. Oh, bitch threw him under the bus. Mama finds a scrapbook and is understandably shocked. Why can't you watch porn like everyone else? She rips up his book and this is almost sad. Look at him just standing there. You kind of feel a little bad for him. But he draws the line at messing with Leggy, so he destroys his mother with a crowbar. But let's get that neighbor in here. You knew this was coming. He needs one more for his 12-person centipede. But he has someone special in mind. Ashlyn Yenny, who played Jenny from the first movie. She plays herself as an actress here, so getting her over here was as easy as offering her an audition with Quentin Tarantino. I cannot believe I am here auditioning for a Quentin Tarantino film. <laughs> so now he's got 12. It could be worse. Could be an actual Tarantino movie. It would be four hours long and a lot bloodier. He's got the Human Centipede playbook, and he's running it play by play. Martin has blueprints, his movie reference, and the tools. What? No melon baller or fish scaler? But he does bring the anesthesia. So much brain damage. Seems he was too rough and killed the pregnant woman. He sets her aside. You know what's coming. The tension is pretty awful at this point. I haven't been able to make a fist in the last half hour. Now I'm in permanent karate chop hands. First he cuts the knee ligaments. Then he knocks out their front teeth with a hammer. Is this what you want? This segment is brutal, visceral, and a little too drawn out. He tries Dr. Hyder's buttock 
skin flap technique, but he cuts too deep and bleeds out his patient. See what happens when you don't study? So he improvises with duct tape and staples. He's finished, and it's a little crude. Ultim <laughs> I need a minute. Ultimately, his centipede is 10 people long with Ashlyn in front. Pfft, celebrities, always cutting to the front of the line. He tries feeding, but that goes about as expected. So he tries force feeding with a funnel. Things aren't quite, uh, moving. So when sensual massage doesn't work, he tries a super laxative, which is too powerful. So powerful, it blasts color back into the movie. That color is brown, you get the idea. <laughs> Let's just say he would make a bad plumber. The next time someone asks me to explain trickle-down economics, I'll just show him this scene. <laughs> After that finale, Martin wraps his junk with barbed wire and rapes the poor woman at the end position of the, of the centipede. Man, this is this movie. It's just too much. The pregnant lady, who turns out isn't dead, is in fact going into labor. She runs out of the room, her water breaking everywhere, and she gets into the landlord's car left out front. She gives birth while Martin's trying to get at her. <sighs> and she gets away, killing her baby in the process. <sighs> wow, I need a minute. Um, cat time. <laughs> While Martin is busy, the neighbor, who is positioned in the center of the centipede, rips himself free. <laughs> Martin is, of course, pissed all his work is going to hell. Which is kind of a shame, since things were going so smoothly until now. So, and he starts killing off the centipede a segment at a time. Ashlyn momentarily fights back, but all it does is free Leggy. Ashlyn's the only one left. And he pauses. No, you cannot have an autograph. Bollock punch! I guess you need to fight with what you have. So while he's down, she grabs the funnel, leggy, and you can see where this is going. She Richard gears that critter right up the tailpipe. Didn't they do this on Jackass? Why did I eat so many crickets? He kills Ashlyn, and that's the end of the centipede. We cut to Martin, sitting back at his station, looking normal as if we're back at the beginning of the movie. Was it all a dream? A sick fantasy? Normally, I hate it when movies do that, but in this case, it would be a relief. Can I just walk away knowing this was all in his head? Maybe, if only you didn't hear that child still crying in that car. Whew. That was the Human Centipede 2 full sequence. And I need a drink. Martin was a product of a horrible upbringing and an abusive household, caught in a dreary, painful existence. Other than a few guttural sounds, Martin has no dialogue. His posture, his blank stare, his actions all convey what you need to know. He's a broken individual, scurrying from scene to scene like a little bug. Early on, you almost sympathize with him when you learn his story, but then the crazy train rockets right past that. He's a hard character to watch. He's gross, animalistic, inhuman at times. He seems to have the mind of a child, but he's so fucked up that empathy becomes impossible. Hearing this guy interviewed calmed me down a bit, and I remembered he's just an actor. Still, I have to admit, he gives it his all. Martin is a villain, but most of his victims antagonize him at some point, almost to justify them being victimized. The only victim he seemed to pick specifically was Ashlyn, probably because Johnny Depp was busy. Also, Dr. Heiter in the first movie was at least a surgeon. He had the technical skill. This guy works in a car park, and he probably never ever set foot in a Holiday Inn. And he masturbates with sandpaper. He likes it rough. It's done purely for cheap shock value. Let's take the most upsetting image and make it worse. This whole movie feels like a triple dog dare. There's a lot of bug imagery. Even Martin reminds me of a cockroach. And I think his mother is suicidal, just as miserable as Martin. Kill us both! I'm begging you! She even tries to kill him at one point, but fails. And he's just like, Good night, mother, and goes to bed. Maybe she needs a hobby like her son. 
The feel of the sequel is a lot different from the first sequence. It's black and white, of course, to slip things past the censors, but this also gives the movie a dreary, nightmarish tone. Every frame is horrific. The first half of the movie looks almost like a low-budget indie film. It's almost artsy. Yeah, that shit don't last. First sequence was gross, but also a lot happened mercifully off-screen. Your brain filled in the blanks just enough to make sense without overloading your sensibilities. Unless your brain is an asshole. Director Tom Six said he wanted to give the audience more of their favorite stuff from the first movie. And he did. As a kid, have you ever been caught smoking by your parents? This is the movie making you smoke the entire pack at once. You like three people? Here's twelve. You like blood? Let's watch tendons getting cut. You like pooping? Let's spray it at the camera. It's like a cinematic middle finger. There's no attempt at social commentary, moral repercussions, or any of the typical horror tropes. There's no character development. Big shock, right? The movie literally ends where it starts. There's no real payoff. The centipede dies and it just ends. And the unsettling, gross, and despicable imagery makes the movie feel twice as long. 1B. It's more of the worst parts of the first movie. It's dreary, it's dark, it's unsettling, it's a non-stop assault. It's a snuff film capped by the most vile poop joke I have ever seen. It took a lot to sit through this movie. I still can't make a fist. The things I do to grow this channel. That being said, if this gets 10,000 views, I'll do part three. There isn't a part four, is there? Yep, <clears throat> King Kong ain't got nothing on me. All right, I just rewatched part two and I had the same opinion. Oh, wow. As far as horror movies go, this one was horrifying. The imagery, the brutality, just shameless through and through, like a freight train of madness. No apologies, no safe spaces. But here's some more trivia. The feces used in the film was made from cocoa powder, condensed milk, and crushed cookies. It was apparently so tasty that the crew was snacking on it between takes. And it's vegan! So according to part two, part one was a movie, and part three, part two is also a movie, which makes part one a movie within that movie. It's like Inception with more felching. Do not Google that. I, I thought I was safe. I dared my audience to the view counts to Human Centipede 2 to, I think, 10,000. I'm like, I'm safe. But I didn't realize that Human Centipede 1 already surpassed 10,000. And 2 took, I don't know, like a couple weeks to hit uh, 10,000, which was a pretty big climb. Did not expect that. I was thankful, and I decided to keep riding this train. So this is the Human Centipede 3. Final sequence. How did I get myself into this? Apparently you guys love the Human Centipede reviews, so this one's for you. I'm doing this out of love. It started in 2009 with the Human Centipede first sequence. It was shocking, it was gross, it was wince-inducing. It gave the torture porn genre a boost. Then, in 2011, there was the Human Centipede 2, full sequence. It managed to out-shock, out-gross, and out-wince the original. The first one traumatized me enough, so I reviewed it, to see if it was as bad as I remember. It was. And part two, even worse. Which brings us here. 17,000 views can't be wrong. This is the Human Centipede 3 final sequence. Before we begin, I got my little, <laughs> I got some of the, the heavier stuff, a vomit bucket, phone loaded with cat pictures, and a box of tissues in case I start weeping. Let's do this. We start with people watching a movie about 
people watching a movie. The first part is a movie in this universe, so is the second part. Jesus Christ. That was pretty much the reaction I had when I watched it. That was disgusting! Now put on a Serbian film like I asked! I recognize these guys. Dieter Laser is Warden Bill Boss, and Lawrence Harvey is Dwight, his accountant. He's actually got more lines this time. What do you think? If they stink. There's a review right there. Good night, folks! Okay, let's keep going. Oh, Brie Olson is here to add some class as Daisy, the secretary and only credited female in the cast. She's... she's not treated well here. Well, that is an understatement. You know, I was an office assistant once. It wasn't that different. They work at George W. Bush State Prison, which has a worse record than Oz, Shawshank, and that prison from Fortress combined. A guard is stabbed by a prisoner, played by Tiny Lister. He's just irritable because his bones aren't getting enough air. Punishment here is swift and harsh. They're going to miss days like these. Ah uh, yes, the best way to gain respect? Behave like every middle school substitute teacher I've ever had. I deserve respect! Respect! I think someone has a crush. His blood pressure is through the roof which is strange since he's so laid back and chill. The prison isn't doing too well. Too much violence, medical costs are through the roof, everyone is out of ideas. Bringing back medieval torture methods. It's nothing like Orange at all. Please. Eyes for eyes. <laughs> um, line? Uh, teeth for teeth! A prison should be a real deterrent and a goddamn nursing home. I agree. Bill gets a package in the mail. What is that? Bright clitorises. A jar of imported clitorises. Wait, what? Clitorises! What? I think I found my new ringtone. He eats these for strength. They say crispy and milk. Snap, crackle, and sploosh. You know, he really didn't have to order online. You can get locally farmed clitorises right here in your neighborhood supermarket. It's just that most men have trouble finding them. What? We're coming. What? He also gets crank called a lot, and it really freaks him out. This goddamn meat is driving me insane. I don't think it's the heat. Fudge! Only I didn't say fudge. I said the word. What did you say? Nope! So in retaliation, he waterboards the crank collar with boiling water. I don't think that's how you teabag someone. He survives, but now he has to work as a Subway's meatball marinara. This does not go unnoticed. The governor visits, played by Eric Roberts. Yeah, they got Eric Roberts, and he's not voicing a talking cat this time. He orders Bill to stop the violence and get things under control or they all lose their jobs. I'll return in two weeks. I want changes. I have a feeling he's gonna see some changes, all right. Fuck yourself! He's probably still in the building. Does this lead to reforms, treatment programs, and counseling? Maybe eventually, but first... Castrate them all! Dude, this is a prison, not an animal shelter. Or is it? As a test run, they get a volunteer. Robert Lasardo plays inmate 297, his unfortunate patient. You have to admire a boss who rolls up his sleeves and gets in there himself. You know, it takes balls to castrate someone like that. This scene is too graphic. You actually see him remove his testicles. Oh, no! Here go the hands. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Who put Bob getting this? You think your job sucks. We cut, sorry, poor choice of words, to Boss getting a Lewinsky from his Monica. This goes on way too long and is really uncomfortable to watch. Bill Boss has the weirdest O face. <laughs> this is the prison hospital Bill Boss wing. It looks like he's keeping him busy. We'll start a fucking mass castration doing them all. I know what we can do with all the balls. Bazinga. 
Prison can be fun. How do you feel? I feel fine. How about you? See how castration rendered him docile and friendly? Dwight finally reveals his idea for the prison, turning the entire population in a massive human centipede. This would serve as the ultimate deterrent for any wannabe criminals and people sick of civil liberties. But Dwight needs a more professional opinion for his idea. I've seen those. They're really good. That, that's really cute, Mr. Six. Praising your own movies within your own movie. That is brilliant. Looks like Bill just got back from Walmart. In a rare display of restraint, Bill is hesitant about that centipede idea. We wouldn't want to go too far, would we? So, that's a hard no from Bill. It's always tough on the kids when mommy and daddy fight. And I grew this stupid mustache to look like you! He doesn't have a mustache. Bill gives a pep talk to the audience from The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Bill is later attacked by inmates. Remember me? I have a problem! I'm gonna cut me a fresh hole in your soft kidney tissue. I didn't know that was a thing. It's a thing, isn't it? Do you know what would make this even more awkward? Uh. Huh? It's not what it looks like. After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. But it's just a nightmare. Uh, why was that still a wet dream? You do have centipedes in your human centipede movie, right? Hello? Hello is this I really hate Hello? that man. Director Tom Six cameos as himself. Here he is, kids. Get a good look at him. This is the mind behind these movies. He seems normal, right? Let's get to the fanboying. So I'd like to say congratulations on your movies. They've become a, a cultural meme. Big fan. Uh, thank you, sir. Big fan. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. One digestive tract to another, so it... But there wouldn't be much nutritional value. Can't be any worse than keto. Because the last thing you want is your entire prison to get a copyright strike, they secure permission from Tom Six to use the centipede idea on one condition. On attending one of your real mouth-to-anus operations. Why don't you just watch one of your own movies? Wait, this is one of your own movies. <sighs> Informed consent is extremely important, so they showed the prisoners the first two movies on movie night. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. When they find out this is a vision of things to come, the inmates get a little annoyed. During the riots, guards are injured, Bill jumps out a window, and Daisy is beaten half to death. Backup arrives, and the riot is contained. And it looks like the centipede is well on its way. Bill starts tranquilizing the inmates. If you just wanted things quiet at the prison, why not just do this every day? Some inmates are not compatible for various reasons. One inmate has Crohn's disease, and he has constant diarrhea, which the warden assigns to be attached in front of the guy who raped him in his dream. What a weird grudge to carry. This is also the man he castrated personally. Just stop, man, you won. Another guy has a stoma, so he won't work in a centipede either. <laughs> Daisy's in a coma, and not in a real hospital for some reason. Seriously, man, we already hate this guy. Look away, Dwight, look away. He starts to, un he, Daisy's unconscious and he starts to rape her. This is a horror movie in itself. Oh, God. better. Tom Six checks in and gets the grand tour. One inmate can't wait to join the centipede, and he spends his time eating what I hope are baby roots. But he's nuts, and Bill doesn't want anyone in the centipede to enjoy what's supposed to be punishment. Is that seriously your answer for everything? How is he getting away with whacking random inmates? Six sees what his movies inspire. The scene, YouTube would flag it instantly if I tried to use it, but I'll try to describe it for you. They stitch one inmate's mouth to another inmate's ass, and the sutures are uh, running back and forth, and they pull on the suture, and it's like the docking sequence from 2001. It is... a sight to behold. 
<laughs> but what about inmates on death row who are never going to be paroled? Bill has his own design for the death row inmates. Trademark, patent pending. And it looks like even Tom Six has his limits. Really, man? This is what makes you puke? The governor returns and is shown the new 500-man human centipede. Well, 500 men and one woman. You see what happens when you don't tip your nurse? What we have here is a failure to defecate. The side project for the death row inmates? The human caterpillar. But it's worth it. Just wait till you see the human butterfly. But you can't argue with results. Dwight's variation of the centipede is not permanent. People can be removed from the chain when they're paroled. This guy finished his sentence, so he's out of here. How are you doing? The warden still isn't convinced. This is a violation of human rights. It's certainly a violation of federal ethics. Nothing left but to clean house. No, wait. Murder-suicide. That's it. Bye, Doc. You know, a bad Yelp review would have been adequate. But the warden returns with a change of heart. This is exactly what America needs. How can you... Oh... You've convinced me. It's genius. <laughs> Even though it was Dwight's idea, Bill would rather take sole credit. <laughs> it's Channel Awesome all over again. The movie ends with Bill reacting to this year's tax bill. I feel you, man. And that was The Human Centipede 3, final sequence. And I did it. It's kind of amusing to see the villains from the first two movies be the villains here as well. Dwight is more sympathetic and almost likable, but Bill Boss is more of a lateral move of crazy. There is a lot wrong with Bill. He screams every third word, he's racist, he's brutal, sadistic, insane, oddly insecure, and misogynistic. They are the main protagonists, but they're also antagonists. They're villains. So who are the good guys? The violent, brutal criminals who are obviously here for a reason? The previous victims were kidnapped, taken, imprisoned before centipeding. This is a common horror trope where bad things happen to good people. These victims are already imprisoned, which turns this horror movie into a civil rights issue. The prisoners are set up to be easier for the audience to feel they deserve this and you're left with very little to root for. Bill Boss is doing sadistic, reprehensible things one minute, then breaks into craziness that makes me uncomfortable for chuckling at him. He's pure id. No filter, no conscience, no regrets. He's like the movie Ted, but instead of a teddy bear magically coming to life, it's a bowl of meth. The closest to a good character isn't even the main character. Daisy is like the only completely innocent character, and she has probably the most backstory, which still isn't a lot. She works for Bill Boss because he let her father out of prison, effectively making her into a slave for clerical and sexual favors. When she's put into the centipede, I feel really bad for her. The doctor is only going along with this because he doesn't have a license and can't work anywhere else. And that's the most backstory you get out of this guy. We can't see the humans suffering as much when we can't pick them out in a sea of kinky bane masks. Eric Roberts seemed a little out of it in this movie. I don't know if he's just bored or just happy to work, or ecstatic he's not a talking cat. The first two movies are horror torture porn, so no surprises there. This has more of a comedic tone. It's still very sadistic, and I wouldn't call it lighthearted comedy, but Laser's performance is so over the top and ridiculous He's hard to fear. And it's a special thing when the former porn star is one of the better actors in the scene. But medieval torture ain't gonna be the answer. What do you call this? The pace is a little bit slow at times, but Mr. Laser is just so insane, I can't take my eyes off of him. He's mesmerizing in a Tommy Wiseau kind of way. Oh, hi, Centipede. The tone is so savage and dark, it's... It is kind of relentless at times. The payoff is kind of a letdown. The horror of the previous centipedes was watching the agony of the victims and the knowledge of the permanence of their position. Here, the participants are removed upon release with no permanent damage, just a few scars and some really bad breath. Plus, it's harder to sympathize with these brutal, hardened, vicious inmates. 
in the end, in a really fucked up way, Bill Boss gets a happy ending. He keeps his job, the centipede is a success, and his blood pressure finally drops to acceptable levels. Human Centipede 3 is one and a half Bs. Maybe I'm desensitized, maybe because the humor kept letting the air out of the sense of dread that the other movies had. Still graphic, still nauseating, still repulsive, but at least it wasn't dull. If you're a fan of the first two, you might get a kick out of the genre swap. If not, well there's always lighter entertainment. What can I say about director Tom Six? The Centipede movies, while vile and despicable, do have an audience. Tom Six is unapologetic about these movies. In fact, he's quite proud of them. He had a vision, and he saw it through. And I can't really fault him for that. Thank you so much for watching. I made it all three Human Centipede movies. And I did it for you guys. You know, I kind of liked pushing myself watching these really messed up movies. I mean, if you recommend any movies, uh, put them in the comments below. I'm going to regret that. Holy shit. What is that? Tribe leaders in Africa. Right, clitoris. What? Clitoris! What? Still with me? I knew you could do it. Three human centipede movies in one sitting. This brought back Dieter Laser for one of his final performances before his death in 2020. Bring the meta references up to 11, director Tom Six appeared as himself. But the Human Centipede 3 was a box office bomb, which begs the question, if it were a success in this franchise-hungry world, how many more Human Centipede movies would we have gotten? You'd have to keep escalating and making it bigger and bigger. Remember that shot at the end of Us with all those people holding hands across the country? Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. And one more piece of trivia, which doesn't involve feces. They wrote in Roger Ebert's review of the first movie into a line of dialogue. This trash belongs in a world where stars don't shine, probably because it has someone's mouth sewn around it. So there you have it. If you stayed this far, you're a true fan and a cool person. But thanks for joining me in this mini marathon and this trip down a really gross memory lane. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles. I need a shower.